Hey guys, it's AJ from Design the Everything. This is the second part of a video that I started a while ago. I tried to see if it was possible to 3D print a compressed air tank. And what I found out is that a 3D printed part is super porous and does not hold any pressure whatsoever. This was the first tank that I tried to print. This was printed in PLA on some fairly conservative print setting. I didn't treat this in any way. And you can see how much it leaked when I put pressure in it. I started off by just hooking it up to my air compressor and seeing how high of a pressure it would hold. After I left it for a couple minutes, it was still at zero PSI, so I put it in a bucket of water to see where it was leaking. Turns out it was leaking from everywhere. I went ahead and put up that video anyway, because I thought it was interesting and valuable. But I wanted to make a second video, this video, about how to actually seal a 3D printed part. Now, on that first video, which was is my most popular video by an order of magnitude, I had a lot of comments giving me some good advice, some bad advice. The most common thing that people said was to smooth it, or to print it in ABS and then smooth it using acetone. Another very common thing was annealing it, which is a, a type of heat treatment. And a couple people mentioned using some sort of epoxy. Now, I listened to you guys and I tried most of those things. I designed these little tanks to do my test with. They're basically the same design um, except instead of the kind of rocket base, I just did a round base and I didn't add an extra neck on top, which actually I think did come back to bite me later. These were printed out of ABS with a slight over extrusion. If you look at them, they're actually pretty rough on the side. Now you see this one, this one here is labeled control. And that is, this one was untreated. I have this one that had a ABS and acetone slurry in it. So what I did is I took AB, I took um, some acetone, I put it in a jar, and I just kept adding ABS to it until it stopped dissolving more. So I had a saturated solution of ABS. Then I took a, a small syringe, filled it full of that slurry, put it inside the mouth, and sloshed it around trying to get that to cover evenly. I did that three or four times. Now when you saturate acetone with ABS, you get left with this really cool solution that when the acetone evaporates off, which it does rather readily, that's why acetone smells so bad, it's because it likes to uh, evaporate even at room temperature. But when it does that, it'll leave behind the ABS. So in addition to kind of smoothing the inside of this, it also left an additional film of ABS around it. This was another viewer recommendation. This one has been sealed with a resin. Uh, specifically, this was a fiberglass resin that's used in like um, repairing a boat or sometimes an automotive. This isn't anything that is hard to get or hard to find. This is just available from a big box store. Uh, I mixed up some and again, I put it just like with the, uh, the ABS slurry, I put it in side and I sloshed it around all the way and then I used a paintbrush and lightly brushed on a coat to the outside and you can see this is the nozzle that I've been using for, for testing them. This one here I use cold vapor smoothing. I use the uh, the process I talked about in my cold vapor smoothing video where I, I made a little jar that has a fan to help the, the acetone vapor circulate. This was smoothed for half an hour as you can see, it is rather melty. I did not focus too hard on trying to smooth the inside. I probably should have, but just by looking into it, I can tell that it smooths a little bit in there, but not as much as the outside. I also printed the same air tank in a material that's called TPU. This stuff is surprisingly flexible and has really good layer adhesion. I have two more tanks here that I have left set aside. I was originally planning on annealing these and I started doing a lot of research. I read quite a few papers, I read some manufacturer's recommendations, and I talked to some of my professors. And what I found out is, yes, you can stick it in the oven and it might do something to the properties, but generally all that does is just make it brittler if you don't control the process very well. And, it, and it's, uh, it could very easily lead to cracking. 
I, I have not given up on a million though. I think it's a very cool process and I think there's a lot of potential for it. So I'm actually doing another video. I don't know when it's going to come out. I think it's going to take me a little bit longer like this video where I'm hacking a bread maker, giving it a very fine temperature control so we can control the heating and cooling of this to a couple degrees over the course of a couple hours. From my research so far, what I found is what we want to do is heat it up slowly from you know room temperature to about the glass transition point over the course of like four hours, leave it there for eight hours, and then again, cool it over four hours. Again, you just don't have that kind of control with a toaster oven or um, a kitchen oven. So it's really going to need a specialized piece of well, specialized piece of equipment that I will be making in another video. I'm already about halfway done with that conversion. I just need to finish up the software and then you know make sure it doesn't burn down my house, which at this point is a distinct possibility. So I will do an annealing video. Honestly, though, I don't have very high hopes for it. Annealing takes place on the grain and crystalline level. It doesn't actually affect geometries that much. So while it might affect the properties of the plastic, I don't think it'll affect the shape enough to change the porosity. But you never know. I'm, I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. All right, let's start getting into the testing of these. Uh, well, first of all, a little bit of background on the printing. These were all printed at the same time on the same printer with the same spool of filament. I can't guarantee that they are all identical just due to the inconsistencies in the 3D printing process but it is as close as I can get. They were definitely printed with 100% all of the same conditions. They were all printed with 100% infill, and I set my slicer to give them 10 perimeters, which is actually uh, everywhere in here, there was no actual infill, it was all just perimeters. So and all, the PLA is going all the way around this way, which should make it as strong as it can be. They were printed with supports, which probably wasn't necessary, but there is just a slight overhang here on the bottom. They did not need any supports on the inside because the walls here are still fairly steep. Once they were printed, I labeled them so that I could keep track of which one is lich. For example, this one's control. This one is cold vapor. And then I went with whatever post-processing that I did. Once they were treated, I went ahead and drilled out just a little bit more from the hole. and then tapped them with a half inch NPT thread. That matches this adapter th that I used. I found that the silver one I used in the previous video was a little bit short and it probably didn't affect anything, but it was kind of harder to get a good grip from the nozzle on. Once they all had threads in them for the adapter, I, one by one, I put them into that red tank that you see here, which is, I've been calling it my flash chamber. Um, really, it's just a little bit of added protection. Even if these exploded, I don't think they would um, be all that dangerous, honestly, even at a higher pressure. Um, I don't think they would explode. I think they would just get a, a crack and maybe rock it around, which would have been cool. Just in case that little tank added just a little bit more compression. It had a, a polycarbonate um, shield going around it, and it wasn't sealed tight so that it would have some, some play to release all that pressure in. And also, just for the record, I was not only wearing safety glasses, but I set my air compressor up on a remote so that I could start it and stop it from a distance. So I would actually walk into another room, start it, let it run for a while, uh, turn it off, come back in the room, and see if it was still under any pressure. Of course, when I got back to the room, none of them were still under pressure, but I was able to look at the video and see what the max pressure was on all of them. I know quite a few of you were worried about safety, but I'm still alive, so apparently I know what I'm doing. There were some surprising results from this test. First of all, the control still held absolutely zero pressure. This thing is still completely porous. The TPU samples also did not hold any pressure. The slurry, on the other hand, held some pressure. It got up to, it looks like 100 or 120 PSI. The 
the acetone smoothed, which was my favorite and a lot of people's favorites before I started, also was porous and held zero pressure. But the winner was the resin. The resin smoothed looked like it held 140 or so PSI. Resin sealed version did a little bit better than the ABS slurry. The only two that held pressure in the end were the slurry and the resin. I wanted to know more about where they were leaking. And I was afraid that they were leaking from these threads. Half inch NPT threads are designed to be used in hard materials like steel or brass. I wasn't really sure how well they would work in the softer plastic. I did another test. I hooked up the air compressor to this and then set it in a clear jar of water with my camera aiming at the side. Using that, I was able to see where the bubbles were escaping. And the results were super interesting. As expected, the controls were still the same. Air was escaping from everywhere on here. The cold vapor had exactly the same problem. The rate may have been slowed down a little bit, but they were still it was still completely porous. The TPU was odd. It seemed to hold air at these seams here, but it was losing everything from the bottom. And I, I actually went and printed another one to see if it was just a defect with the print, but it's it's the same. For some reason, something about this right here causes it to leak. I don't know if it's a problem with the slicer, where it just lined up layers and then air happens to be able to escape, or if that's just how the material, or if that's just the direction where the material is weaker. But I still could not get them to hold pressure. You could probably do quite a bit of investigating with the TPU, and you might actually still be able to get this to hold pressure, since it wasn't porous on this direction here. The tank that I smoothed with the ABS slurry only leaked from the top like 10%. Now I'm pretty sure that doesn't actually have anything to do with the effects of the, the slurry. I think that has to do with user error. My guess is when I, I poured in the slurry and sloshed it around, I just don't think I got the top. What I probably should have done is poured a bunch in there, cover the top with like a piece of plastic or something since it is the acetone, and shaken it around better, and then dumped out the excess. I didn't. However, the bottom part was completely airtight, up to like 140 pounds of pressure, which is fantastic. The one that I sealed with the fiberglass resin actually did not leak through the plastic whatsoever. The only place it leaked was from where the brass attachment here met the plastic. It's actually a good thing because it meant that it was a problem with something that I did that's fixable and not a problem with the material. I went back and added some Teflon thread tape to the threads of the, uh, the brass adapter here. And tried it again and it was sealing much better. I was really wanting one of these to explode. So I put it back in the red black glass chamber and turned it on. I got to the highest pressure that I've seen so far, about 150 or 160 uh, PSI, but it just stayed there. It, it leveled off. It was either the max that my little tiny baby air compressor can do, which is very possible. In fact, the fact that it can get to 150 PSI is rather amazing to me or it was just leaking as fast as the little air compressor could fill it, which is, which is my guess. This is, what did we learn today? We learned that 3D printed parts and PLA and ABS are not airtight whatsoever by themselves. We learned that TPU is better, especially on the sides, but for some reason in some areas that I can't explain, it leaks more from. We learned that cold vapor smoothing, while it does make it shiny and smooth, does not get rid of the porosity of a part. But we learned that using a acetone and ABS slurry or resin or a fiberglass resin to seal a part 
does make it airtight or can make it airtight if you do a good enough job. You also learn that you can use MPT threads in a 3D printed part, but you really want to use something like a Teflon tape or a plum plumber's putty. Now I'll do a, a future video where I show you the annealing process and I'll show you how I hacked the bread maker to make it a temperature controlled oven. And hopefully we'll see if this one can be made airtight. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I worked harder on this video than I think I did on all my other videos combined. Uh, if you liked this style of video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see the rest of my videos as they come out, whether they're project videos or tutorials, please hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell next to it. If you have a question, a request for a future video or a tutorial, please leave it in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.